This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one solution for anyone looking to create an awesome website. Welcome to a new episode of Guide Runner, a series where I casually guide you through the creation of a piece of my photo manipulation artwork, giving you a little insight into my thought process with a few tips and tricks along the way. But before we run it, I just want to say a quick thank you for all your questions in my recent community posts. There's some great stuff there and I'm working to get that video out to you soon. This week's piece sees a lone knight facing off against a fierce dragon, so let's jump right into it. I've chosen a rather bleak and cold setting for this piece, which should set me up nicely in achieving a more darker, ominous tone. I've got my assets ready and I'm beginning by getting my base plate in position. I really like the starkness of these dead snow covered trees, but for the vision I've got in mind, I need the ground to be a little flatter, so I'm dropping in this image on top and erasing what I don't need. I'm also going to replace the original sky with this more turbulent looking cloudscape. I want a portion of the ground to be void of snow, for reasons which will become clearer later on, so I've got this muddy geyser image, and the part I'm interested in is the outer section, where the mud kind of bleeds into the snow. I can use this to achieve a nice blend from snow to, uh, not snow. I'm then going to use this charred volcanic landscape image to make up the ground untouched by snow. Also utilizing other various snow textures to make the blend more realistic and seamless. I needed some heavier smoke and mist which will later help conceal parts of our enemy, so this forest fire image will do the job nicely. Here I'm painting in some atmospheric perspective using a large soft brush and then lowering the layer opacity. Whilst there's already a bunch of trees in the image, I'm in need of some larger, more defined ones, so I've compiled a bunch of stock images trying to find a similar type of tree. These two in particular in the center of the image need to match the charred look of the ground beneath them, without any snow. And then adding a few more on the outskirts that are covered in snow. Again, the reason why will make a bit more sense in a bit. But before we continue, let me introduce today's sponsor, Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace to create websites for many years, including my most recent website, phaserunner.com. The great thing with Squarespace is that you really don't need to be a pro web designer to start building your website. All that difficult stuff has already been taken care of, allowing you to truly focus on what's important, building the website that best represents you. Now my website is constantly evolving. I recently wanted to have a dedicated page for my artwork. Squarespace makes it easy for me to keep this page up to date with my latest work. Using the gallery feature, I can simply choose which image I want to upload and bam, it's there. Squarespace also offers a wide array of features like members areas, blogging tools, analytics, and for those of you who just want to upload a logo and add their details, there are plenty of modern templates to choose from. Be sure to check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash phase runner to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. I'll drop a link in the description below. Here I'm just cleaning up the blend where it looks a bit soft and unrefined in certain places. So now I'm starting to double down on this middle section and clipping some volcanic textures to the center trees to give the impression that these trees have clearly suffered some kind of fire damage.
and doing the same thing with the ground, taking it a little bit further by adding a few flames here and there. Now, I was in need of a character for this piece and the pose I had in mind was quite specific and unfortunately, I couldn't find a stock image that matched what I was after. So in these cases, there are a couple of ways around it. Sometimes I might paint a base for the character and then apply assets on top. But what if you haven't yet built up those skill sets? Well, another option and one of the quickest is using a simple 3D character poser tool like this one. It's great for creating quick poses that can act as a simple reference for your characters. There's also a bunch of handy tools for altering things like lighting direction, as well as being able to adjust skin tone. Best of all, the main functionality is free and it works directly in your browser. I know this sounds like an advert, but it's not. This is something I've genuinely used for a couple of years now. Okay, now that I've got my desired character pose, he's looking a bit cold, so we need to get some clothes on him. Using multiple angles of this night image, I can pull the parts I need at the right angle and begin to position them into place and slowly build up my night. It's a little fiddly and it takes some extra work, but it's worth it in the end to fully bring your vision to life. Of course, he needs a weapon, so I've dropped in this 3D sword asset. I'm also going to give him that classic night shield, which I'll drop into place and simply move the strap so it makes more sense. It's still lacking a few trees, so I'm adding in a couple more. It was surprisingly hard to find the right style of tree that also had snow on them, so I'll have to manually paint that in later. And finally, we introduce our dragon. Or is it a wyvern? I don't know, what's the difference? Anybody? But anyway, the composition felt a bit flat, so I've given him a slightly different wing to add some height to the image. Once that's loosely blended, I can then move him into position. Masking away the parts I don't want so that it appears shrouded in the mist and then adding a few highlights to the thinner, fleshier parts of the wing. I usually do my main highlights at the end, but as you can see by my layers panel, I'm pretty chaotic in the way I work and I do the ideas as they come to me. And finally remembering to paint in the snow on these bare trees. For this I use a hard chalky brush with a little bit of texture. The image is still looking a little bit flat so I'm just going to start painting in some highlights just to bring the image together and give it a little bit more depth. 
The idea for this piece is to capture the moments after the dragon has attacked our knight, so we're seeing the aftermath of some fiery attack. And I thought it might be a cool touch to have his sword glowing hot where the flames reach the exposed parts of his blade. And the same thing for his shield. Here I'm using the color range tool to pull some highlights from these smoke and cloud images which I can then place around the environment just to add a bit more detail and texture. and adding to the drama by adding some fire to the shield of our knight that hasn't quite gone out yet. For this I simply move the fire layer below the shield layer, set the blending mode to screen, and then simply erase what I don't want and warp it into place. And a few more patches of fire on the ground. Okay, I'll let these last moments play out as we're entering the final stages now. I'm just adding those last touches and effects to help add to the atmosphere and bring the piece together. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the final image reveal, please leave a like and comment if you've enjoyed, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and don't forget to hit that bell to stay notified about any new content.